Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Sunday Politics, live on Channel Television. I'm Sean sure Kimaloe in Abuja. We begin with his sad story. And he's on the attack on St. Francis Catholic Church in Owo, on those state where scores of people were attacked and several of uh, the worshippers injured and others killed. The governor of the state, Mr. Rotimi Akredalu, has since met with heads of security agencies and vowed to bring the uh, uh, silence and the perpetrators to book. A clip of the scene revealed victims being killed and lying on the church floor in a pool of their own blood. An eyewitness, Ugweze Victor, told China's television that the assailants were throwing bombs and shooting at the same time. He said about 25 persons were taken to the hospital, while about 100 people are feared dead. According to him, when the gunmen stormed the church, they shot many people in the leg and others at different parts of their body. Art goes out to the victims and the families of those who've lost their lives in that sad incident. And today, ahead of the presidential primary and extraordinary national convention of the ruling APC, Governor Abubakar Baguru is assuring party faithful of huge free conduct of the exercise. Mr. Baguru who spoke during the inauguration of the 19 subcommittees at the National Secretariat of the Party in Abuja, says its members have been fully energized to ensure a befitting and successful convention. We hear from uh, Governor Bagudu much later on the preparations of the APC for the national convention and presidential primary. Meanwhile, presidential aspirants from the Southwest and the key stakeholders of the party from the region have met in Abuja. This follows the meeting by the president with the aspirants where President Buhari has urged all presidential aspirants on the platform of the party to consult among themselves, build consensus, and produce a formidable candidate for the party. Well, there's a lot to chew as far as the APC presidential primary is concerned. The fact remains that, as it stands right now, the president has said he will like up uh, a situation where reciprocity will be the name of the game where he's allowed to choose his successor. Now, the question, let's look at some of these images that are prepared for understanding of some of these issues. Now, the consensus or indirect primary, that's a big question. It does look that the word consensus have been mostly used in recent time in the APC as far as deciding who will be the, uh, the candidate of the party. Take a look at this slide. Um, consensus or indirect primary, which way for the APC? Is it a consensus or indirect primary? The question is the consensus idea seems to have come up more often than not, but who will be the candidate of the party? Well, there is one person that the time is a whole lot. Aside the delegates that will vote, He's got a super delegate. He's tagged that, the president, Muhammad Buhari. Um, uh, if the consensus idea has to work, it's probably going to uh, lead the, uh, the conversation and to talk to um, uh, the, the party leaders. But if that is going to happen, how will this? I'll show you what the law says about the idea of consensus. But the question is, who does the cap fit? Is it from the south or from the north? There has been argument in the APC whether or not you're going for a northern candidate or a southern candidate. It's a dilemma for the ruling party. Who does a cap fit? A northerner in the APC in the run or a southerner? A dilemma for the APC. Well, out of all the presidential aspirants, now we have 23 of them. Out of these 23, um, it does look to me that there will be one person that will emerge, but who would that be? Now, these are the aspirants from the north, from the governor of Kogi State, Yaya Bello, to the former governor of Zamfara State, to the Senate, Senate President, Ahmed Lawan, and the governor of Jigawa State, Babaka Abaduru, who is going to be uh, the person out of the, these are the northern force in the race. Now, what does the electoral law say about 
the issue of consensus. Let me show you briefly what the Electoral Act says. Is a section 84, subsection 9, uh, 10, and 11, which a political party that adopts a consensus candidate shall secure the written consent of all cleared aspirants for the position, indicating their voluntary withdrawal from the race and their endorsement of the consensus candidate. Take a look further to what section 9, 10 says. It says that. After all of these have been agreed and you've agreed that there is a consensus and every party in the, uh, in the, in the race uh, have agreed to a consensus, where a political party is unable to secure the written consent of all cleared aspirants for the purpose of a consensus candidate, it shall revert to the choice of direct or indirect primaries for the domination of candidates for the aforesaid elective positions. Section 11 also buttresses what the parties need to do. But for the APC, who are the delegates? Take a look at how the calculation comes. Who are the delegates for the APC? They are picked along uh, um, the local government areas uh, because you remember that there was a, a court case um, which the party is not certain whether it's going to follow uh, that path or not. But this, the calculations are pretty much straightforward on how the delegate is going to emerge. Now, uh, take a look at how the delegates are going to emerge by zone and, of course, by region and the distribution of the delegates by state and uh, by geopolitical zone and the north-south distribution of the delegates. So this is how it's going to uh, go. Of course, three delegates across the 774 local government area. Let me flip this page quickly and show you how the map looks like uh, by region, by, uh, by state, and geopolitical zone, if that can come quickly on the screen. All right, we'll give you that um, in, uh, uh, as we go on, on the program. Now, tonight, let's take a look at some of the issues that have come up in this whole conversation. I'm being joined by one of the frontline aspirants in the race, a two-term uh, governor serving his second term in office, a governor of Kogi State in Nigeria's North Central State. Now, Governor Yaya Bello joins us live here in our studio in Abuja. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us. Thank you very much, yeah. Mr. Shane Okimbaloye. Thank you so much for coming. Good evening to all Nigerians watching this program and viewers across the world. Thank you so much. Um, <coughs> how does this come to you? I'd like to show you this letter, uh, this communication that came from some of your colleagues from the northern region of the country, signed by uh, at least not, uh, nothing less than 10 of them. Uh, if you look at that letter, which states that uh, they are conceding that the presidential ca candidate of the APC should come from the south. How does that come to you? Uh, first of all, before I... Uh, attempt to respond to your question, let me use this opportunity to commiserate, to condone the victims, the families, the people, the government, and the governor of Ondo State for the dastard act carried out by cowards, the criminals who went to a church that is carrying on their peaceful worship and mother them. My heart goes out to them. And uh, taking it from there, my dear brother, and then Nigerians, that is the reason why we are in this race. And I wish those that lost their lives at an arrest, and I wish those who have sustained various degrees of injuries, quick recovery, and the whole of the people a quick recovery from the trauma. By the special grace of God, all this shall come to an end when we come on board. And now to your question, Mr. Shio Kimbaloe. First of all, I question and I query that particular letter or statement. Because we in PGF, whether PGF not or PGF generally, when we come to a conclusion about a topical issue, there used to be a communique. There will be press. Uh, um, press um, uh, interview by all the governors we see all of us will flank each other and there will be a press interview there will be first notice of meeting there will be meeting 
uh, um, uh, uh, I mean, uh, minutes of meetings, and all of that that follows a meeting. I am from the North. I'm one of the members of the PGF. I was never notified. And I don't think majority of us have such notification. That is one. Secondly, if you look at the convention, that the last national convention where all the governors, PGF, came about a consensus or um, uh, unity list, you will see how each and every governor endorsed that document. Now put that side by side with this document that is flying around in the social media. You see a signature list and then a statement separately. That is concoction and is purported and is you know, uh, uh, you know, concocted to cause disaffection and overheat the polity. That is number one. Now going by that statement, if assumed without conceding that such statement comes by some of my colleagues. It is just self-opinion. It is not binding on Nigerians. It's not binding on me. It's not binding on the party because PGF North is not an organ of the party. And it's not binding on Northerners or Nigerians generally. And let me quickly sound a note of caution to all Nigerians and advise some of my colleagues who may take it or leave it, that this is just a recipe to dividing this country further along ethnic or regional line. And this has been one of the bane of development in Nigeria and causing a lot of disharmony for each and every one of us in this country. This is not the right time to come up with such an assertion. Besides, APC have a leader in the person of President Muhammad Buhari. APC is the ruling party. APC have a chairman that is highly respected. APC have all leaders across board that are highly respected in this country. And we must, as a matter of uh, importance, we must respect the leadership of our party mm. and at least to a very large extent, try to follow the leadership directive or direction. All right, let me quickly uh, get your view now. Uh, China Television tried to confirm this particular communication and uh, the signature of some of the governors, at least we did with two or three of them, uh, who confirmed that they signed and they are in agreement uh, to it. Is it because um, it's perhaps not in your favor? That's why you are disowning it. Um, Shell, let me tell you, anybody that knows the governor Yahya Bello today will know that there's only one favor that I always seek all days of my life up to this moment. It, that is God Almighty's favor, not any human being. And that is why whatever I do, I put God first. Recall that this journey started almost two years ago when the majority of Nigerians came on board, convinced me, and on my own, I was able to convince myself by telling God Almighty to support me because this journey is for the people and not for myself. It's not an ego kind of a thing. And then we embark on this journey and continued consultations up till this moment. It is not the favor of any human being that I am waiting for. Do you see I am it relying as, on God yeah. and the people themselves. Do you see it as the some party kind delegates? Of, yeah. And party leaders by do, the special. Do you people. see as some kind of betrayal? Because this is your own constituency, the northern governors. These are your closest friends within the governors' forum in your party. And when they come and put up a position that is against your ambition and that of governor, uh, the governor of Jigasa, who is also in the race from the northern region of the country, do you see it as betrayal? Why don't you look at it as a, a favor? Ah, good. It could be a favor. And I look at it as a favor, because at the end of it all, as we speak right now, majority of delegates, not only from the North, but even from the South, as it may be called, but I would refer to it as delegates of all progressive Congress from all across the country are already having a sympathy for Governor Yahya Bello. And as I speak with you now, our numbers have swelled up. Those who are going to elect me 
and make sure that we become victorious, even on the account of that act alone. So you, I am not in any way. You think that was targeted at you? Everybody have their own interests. My interest is to serve the people of this country. My interest is to fly the flag of APC as its presidential candidate and defeat, AP, I mean, PDP, defeat uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar at the polls. You can do that. Uh, by the special grace of God, right now, uh, Shemo Kimbaloe, from the data we have, we don't have less than 27 million Nigerians, both young women and even old ones, who are ready to vote Governor Yahya Bello when we secure the ticket of APC. Yes, and they are from both North, South, Muslim, Christian, and from all various backgrounds. And let me tell you, um, Sean, Mike was tested some few days back when few groups said, look, they really need to show their strength. And there was a simultaneous a rally across this country. Over 16 million, just less than 24 hours notice, over 16 million Nigerians, youths and women throughout all of the state capitals and other cities across this country in support of Governor Yahya Bello. That is a strength. That is the strength of Nigerian youths. That is the strength of Nigerian young population. That is the strength of Nigerian women. That is the strength of Nigerians living with special needs. So if you're talking of whether I will beat Atiku, let me tell you. And I said this sometimes when I was running for my second term, when I was accosted by the pressmen in the villa and asked me whether I'll be, I'll be able to win my second term. And I said, no, it's not just victory we're looking at, but the margin of victory. And as I speak with you now, Sean, before 2 p.m. on the day of the general elections, we will be celebrating victory by the special grace of God okay. when I secure the party ticket. Well, I mean, let's talk about how you hope to secure the party. Uh, I mean, when you were mentioning that you, uh, uh, you, uh, the, the, the people who want you in office, so the question is, uh, you talk about the young people. Do you see yourself as the face of the young people? Today in the executive, especially at this level of governance, governorship level, by the special grace of God, I am still the younger Jid. I'm still the younger one. So you are the voice of At, the young by, people? By June this year, I'll be 47. I am still the young of the young people, the voice of the younger generation, the voice for the women, the voice for the people living with disabilities, the voice for Nigerians, irrespective of your religion, irrespective of your tribe, irrespective of your region, because we have demonstrated it in Kogi State today. Right now, we are mourning those that were killed in Ondo State. In Kogi State, it used to be a, I mean, of frequent occurrence before I came on board. It's already a thing of the past. For crying out loud, Sheon, those that were killed today, they didn't bargain for it. They have governor. They are Nigerians. They want to be secured. And they don't care where you come from. And you have the to solution to the security, insecurity problems of Nigeria. I have demonstrated that well enough in Kogi State. And by the special grace of God, we are going to achieve it within the first 12 months of Governor Yahya Bello's presidency. We'll, we'll come to that in a moment. Let's quickly touch on a few business before, before we get into that. One of which is when you had a meeting with President Buhari and his, he asked um, the aspirants to go and make consultation and have a consensus. But he has said a few days before then that the party and the leaders of the party should give him a chance of reciprocity to be able to pick his successor. Um, uh, the word on the street is that you are very close to the president. Do you see yourself as the president's favorite? I have always said it several times, and I'm not in the mind of Mr. President. I'm not a spokesman as well that Mr. President is always in love with those who carry out their duties diligently, serving the people, and the people are going for. That is number one. Yes, I am close to Mr. President, just like every other Nigerians are close to Mr. President, or every other governor is close to Mr. President. I wouldn't say I am the favored one. But let me quickly make a comment on 
that aspect of reciprocity by Mr. President. You see, our party is such, so blessed with men of wisdom. In the person of Mr. President, in our chairman, various other leaders. And when Mr. President said, look, give me a chance to you know, have a voice, and give me a chance to have a, a kind of input into who succeeds me, we governors have been given that opportunity already. And we took it fully. And then, why would we be fighting Mr. President to have an input in who becomes his successor? That is one. Two, this has happened in this country severally before now, especially in the southwestern part of this country, where leaders will anoint candidates. It has happened severally, and it's still happening now. So why is Mr. President, why the hula baloo about Mr. President seeking and requesting and pleading with governors, with other leaders, that let me have input. He is the one that have eagle eye over each and everyone's performance. He knows exactly what Nigeria is facing today, what he's doing, and what he ought to do, and what he would want to do that he may not be able to achieve in office. And he is looking into the capacities, the competence, and the record of each and every one of us that are aspiring. Let me be able to make an input. Then why all this noise? If we the are not fair uh, Governor to Bello, him. If the president picks someone other than yourself, would you accept it? If it comes from Mr. President, President Muhammad Buhari himself, I will 100% support the person if I am not selected. If it is any other person, I will support the person because that is his wisdom. He knows better than me. He sees better than me. He received reports better than me. Would you prefer the consensus or your, uh, the consensus as arrangement or you prefer to go for election? Any arrangement, I am ready. The most important thing is that, are you ready for this election? Like as I speak with you today, Shion, the number of delegates on their own that have come to this town, who have on their own, on account of even the last yesterday's uh, purported letter that went out, is unimaginable. That is number one. So if it is consensus, I want to believe that Mr. President and other eminent leaders of our party would put things on the table and come up with a Nigerian, not a regional leader, but a Nigerian that will serve this country and secure the country and ensure that there is unity and ensure that there is progress in agriculture, education, infrastructure, and otherwise. So whoever Mr. President will come up with, I am 100% in support of that. And let me tell you, Yishon, it is not only me. In the dinner we had yesterday with Mr. President, Almost everyone's remarks, aside the interview that was conducted by Chief uh, Digio Oyegu, His Excellency, in the last dinner we had yesterday, almost everybody, in fact, 100% of us that are aspiring, have agreed that, Mr. President, whoever you choose among us, we are going to support. Including Bola Tunubu. He was seated. He never objected. Did he agree? He was seated in the meeting, and he did not object to it. So... If somebody speak on your behalf and you don't have any, anything, to, uh, you know, to, 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 to the contrary and you keep quiet, then it's binding on you. So yesterday, everybody spoke on behalf of various regions. Uh, His Excellency Chief Obunai Onu spoke on behalf of the group. His Excellency Bagudu, uh, uh, Governor Badaru of Jigawasi spoke on behalf of the, of the forum. And His Excellency Professor Yemi Osimbajo concurred not only agreeing, but he concurred. Remember, he's a lawyer of repute. He's a professor of law, and he's the number two citizen of this country today. He concurred with that particular assertion. Okay, so, so if Mr. President come up today with a, a president, I mean, a successor or a candidate, and possibly the vice, each and every one of us will flow. So with. of the 2,340 delegates, how many of those do you have in the bag? Uh, I can't say specifically how many I have in the bag, but I want to assure you that I have well over 50% of those delegates already in the kitty by the special grace of God. Your very close ally in your campaign, Mr. Fanikao, they left your campaign. Do you have an idea of why he left? 
Minister of Finance, Kayo Day is not a campaign, uh, it's not a, a, a part of my campaign uh, structure. He's a friend of mine, he's an associate, he's an acquaintance, he's a brother, he's somebody that respects me so highly, and I respect him so highly. And we have been dealing, we have been relating, and we are still relating. As I speak with you, yesterday he was with me, today we'll be together again, we analyze the situation of this country, and we take common position. He was a deputy director general, um, at some point, but it looks so much that he has deviated from his stance on the zoning arrangement. He feels that the next president of Nigeria should come from the south. I don't think... Do you disagree on those kind of issues? I don't think there is anywhere uh, Fanny Kairi can be quoted for that. that he so that's not the point where he... he, he that, that's not the reason he left Fanny your Kairi campaign? Fanny Kairi is my friend. And he has always been with me, and he supports my political surgeon. And he has spoken and about you and your ambition right here on the program. And he is still with me till tomorrow. But is he still in your campaign? I say he's a friend. He has never officially been in a campaign, in the campaign uh, uh, structure of my party. He was on, of that, my, of my, on, the, on the day of your, of, of your flag. Not of everybody your... that was there on my declaration are in the campaign. Friends, well wishers, and Nigerians from across various backgrounds came together to give their support that day. On that day, even though he didn't come to the, to the podium, the Deputy Speaker, uh, Honorable Boasi, was there. But is he in my campaign? No. Now, so the question here is the argument on zoning. For those who have argued that it should go to the South, did the President specifically say he wants it to go to the south. I don't know where Mr. President makes such, such statements. And I, I want to tell you categorically that going all, uh, judging from the statement that came out from his spokesman, uh, Chief uh, uh, Adeshina and uh, Laji Garbashehu, I don't think there's anywhere Mr. President makes such a statement. That is number one. Number two, let me put our mind on this. It is high time we de-emphasize on this issue of zoning, zoning, zoning. From day one, I've always cautioned. Here are victims of bomb blast or shooting in Ondo and several other parts of this country. Ondo is a town that is hosting the current governor of Ondo State, Chivakre Dulu. Mimiko Governor Mimiko handed over to him. No such bomb blast ever took place in Ondo town or in Owa town. He is from Owa particularly. Such thing never happened. Now what happened? Would those people be saying, oh, our person, our person, our person? No. See, let me tell you. In the country today, we are faced with insecurity. What Nigerians want is who will come and secure them. Out of these 26 million Nigerians who wants to support me, who are ready to vote me into office today, and the number is still increasing, it cut across this country. Look at the last rally they held across the country. They know very well that I am a Muslim. They know very well that I am from Kogi State. They know I'm an Ibiraman. They know I am from the North. And yet, by my past performance, by my competence, by my desire, my innermost you know, quest to serve this country, driving and firing us. They are all out there to support me. They are not talking of zoning. You see people from Akwa Ibom, from Anambra State, from Cross River, from Rivers, from Oyo, from across the country. They didn't ask, where did I come from? So if Nigerian younger generation, the younger generation of Nigerians are trying to de-emphasize that dichotomy, and we still have some leaders, I refer to them as regional leaders or zonal leaders, are still emphasizing on this, then Nigerians and the delegates should better shine their eyes. It is high time we move past all of this. For crying out loud, we travel across the globe. If you go to America today, you don't care where Joe Biden come from. If you go to London today, you don't care where the prime minister come from. 
If you go to Dubai today, I don't think everybody even know who is the, uh, the, the supreme leader or their leaders there in Dubai and several other countries that we see. So why are we always holding on to this? I, it is high time our elites lift their knees off the neck of this country and let Nigeria breathe. Right. And I, by the special grace of God, will lift their knees off the neck of Nigerians so that Nigeria can breathe. So you want to fight the, Cal the Kabars? I don't know of any Kabar. But you just spoke about I am someone. out to win. I am out to fly the flag of APC. I am out to defeat PDP. I am out to be the president and commander-in-chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and provide leadership and provide security and provide unity and provide, bring progress and prosperity right. to Nigerians. And that we have achieved, we are achieving in Kogi State. All right, we'll take a breather, Governor. And when we come back, we get your closing uh, thoughts on some of this issue. And afterwards, after our conversation with Governor Yaya Bello, we'll also be speaking with Professor Hafiz Abubaka on the Oshibajo agenda and the APC ticket is a lot that is happening behind the scenes ahead of the APC primary. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Our closing moment with Governor Yaya Bello of Kogi State, one of the presidential aspirants of the APC. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for your time tonight. Thank you once again. Uh, let's close the conversation because... Um, should you get a ticket, we'll get into some other issues as relating to how you want to uh, govern Nigeria if you get a mandate. But the question is, how, first and foremost, you're going to get the ticket of your party? Um, the likes of uh, Bola Tinubu, the likes of Professor Shibajo, should you get into the race for an election? What gives you the confidence that you can beat some of these people? First of all, I'm in the race. Not should I get into the race. I am in the race. And I am the candidate to beat. Secondly, not if I get the ticket, when I get, get the ticket, how do I intend to go about my campaign? What gives and you confidence the that you get a ticket? Uh, uh, I have 100% confidence that I will get the ticket. First, Nigerians, I have, it's all about who will win, first of all, who will be able to defeat uh, Vice President. Tiku Abubakar, former, and PDP. I took APC in mean, Kogi State, I, I took over from a PDP governor, where APC used to be about 30 to 40 percent. Today, Kogi is almost 100 percent APC. I was able to do that. In all of the elections I conducted, we have won, almost won all of it across the country. And today, the tempo the language out there is the younger generation, changing the paradigm, paradigm shift from the older generation to the younger generation. Our fathers, our leaders have done quite tremendously well within their capacity. You can't continue to flog the horse that cannot go beyond its capacity and think you can win the race. So right now, it is the time for the younger generation. And even as we speak right now, I'm already grooming leaders within my state who will take over from me. And I believe this should be in the mindset of our leaders, of our fathers, founding fathers, as, and, the, and the rest, as to who will be able to take over this button and then mentor more leaders after them and after us. Mm. And I am the one that is going to bridge the gap between the old and the younger generation, uh, all right. and provide the hope that eludes us almost 30 years behind. And let me tell you, I was uh, shown, I am the only kind as, as parents that came up with a clear roadmap as to what we are going to do in this country. Time will not permit us to go into that. Uh, but at a, later, at a later date, we're going to bring all of this out. Shion, let me just conclude. So please tell Nigerians, especially Nigerian, I mean, APC delegates, who are already coming in in their numbers, why we welcome them. They should put it behind their mind. Who is the person who bridged the gap? 
who is that person that is going to provide that security and is doing it right now in his state? Who is that person who is going to build on the legacies of President Muhammad Buhari? Who is that person who will ensure that APC defeats PDP in the forthcoming election? Put aside the sentiment of where you come from, the sentiment of religion, the sentiment of who is this person, class difference. And that is Let's you. Let's put all of this aside, and that candidate all is right. myself, al Haji Yahya Dozabello. Thank Go you very much. Governor Yahya Bello, thank you so much, and I wish you the very best thank when you. you get into the arena on Tuesday. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so tonight. much. Thank you. Like, we'll take uh, uh, another break, but of course, we'll let you to listen to the chairman of the APC Convention Planning Committee and their preparations. Then, my next guest, Professor Afiz Abubakar, will be joining us on the Oshibaju agenda. I know that some convention committees and <laughs> subcommittees are dependent on the input of others. Coming at a time like this, what that calls for is for all of us to cooperate, given what the chairman said clearly and what is known to us that this is a uh, convention like no other, which is uh, intended to, by God's grace, produce a presidential plan bearer. And I believe from comments I have, have been hearing of party members, we are all energized to ensure that we have a beating and successful convention. So once again, Mr. Chairman and members of the National Working Committee, on behalf of all of us, we appreciate the honor to us and we want to give the commitment that we do our very, very best to uh, ensure that our party uh, produce a very successful convention uh, in the next two years. Okay, you heard him there, but let's uh, switch gears now and speak about the Oshibaja campaign, the agenda, and uh, some of the issues that have been thrown up in the last few days. I've been joined by a chieftain of the party, Professor Hafiz Abubakar. Thank you so much, Prof, for joining us. Thank you. It's sir. good to see you again. Thank you. What is it looking like for the Oshibaja team and the chances of the team ahead of the primaries? Very brilliant. Brilliant in the sense that uh, we have been doubly encouraged, honestly, by the steps taken by some of the notable northern governors. This meeting and uh, 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 press release about their position that the presidency should be zoned to the southern part of the country has been a wonderful encouragement. But even before that, the outcome of the intensive interactions that our candidate had with the delegates across this country. In fact, it was the only one out of the 23 candidates that was able to tour the whole of the 36 states in the FCT of this country, meet with the delegates, interact with the delegates, and we have heard the outcome of that intensive interaction. He didn't go there to lecture them or to even deliver a program. Actually, it was a full-pledged interaction by way of asking, uh, allowing the delegates to ask him what they want to know about him, what has he for this country, what he understood through his tenure as number two of this country, and what does he have. And they ask very, very important questions that mind them. So, uh, Prof, I'd like to ask, uh, the president has asked all of the aspirants, go to your different zones and uh, try to get a consensus and streamline the numbers. Those are some of um, the instructions. But from what is looking like from the South West, for example, that's where the vice president uh, comes from. Um, when it comes to streamlining and getting a consensus, it will be head to head with the likes of Bola Tinubu, the likes of Kaode Fayemi, um, uh, the likes of Borifes, AJ Borifes. Um, what, chan what are the chances of the vice president in even getting a nod from his own region, Southwest? Well, I, it depends on who will be involved in this decision. But I want to believe, starting even from the stakeholders, I'm sure for every region of this country, Southwest in the lead, in my own opinion, 
will put this country first before any individual. And why you put this country first, my candidate comes number one. Obviously. So, I mean, the question is, the decision of the president, Muhammad Buhari, as we call him, as he's been tagged, the superdelegate, will be fundamental. Yeah. But what is his place with the president? Does it look like a favorite? I mean, have you read the body language of the president to make, I mean, to give that inclination whether Oshibajo could be the man and the heart of President Buhari? No, I've just had a sitting governor telling you nobody can claim to read the body language of Mr. President. I'm very inconfident to say I can read the body language of Mr. President. Oh, can, you, can you do a permutation to see permutation. whether or not the president, because based on what he said, he said, allow me to be able to pick my successor. Yes. In, that, in those words and in those language and some of the narrative that the president has pushed out in the last few days, does, yes. it, does Professor Shibajo look in the mode of the person that President Buhari might pick when, as successor? When I, eat, when I add a part of his speech, where he's saying he wants a candidate that uh, the voters of this country, even before election, you know, would have you know, picked themselves. It, 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 it points to Professor Osimbanjo, one. Two, in all the interactions with delegates, Professor has made it very clear that he had an excellent working relationship with his principal, and his principal had taken him into confidence you know, in all what has been happening in government in this country, in which he sanked him severely for tutoring him uh, in the course of governance because of uh, his uh, not hiding anything from him, from government. And therefore, uh, we from his camp believe that eventually it will come because he's number one in redeeming the APC itself. You, you, I mean, what do you make of, should, I mean, Professor Shibajo be the, the aspirant that the president speaks or the consensus uh, uh, candidate of the APC or the man who emerges the winner in the APC, there will be a larger battle, a bigger one, that is the general election. And it's going to be against the likes of Peter Obi of the Labour Party, <laughs> against the likes of Atiku Abubakar of the PDP. Um, the permutation about a northerner facing a southerner in the race, is your party afraid of that kind of scenario? No, 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 certainly. No, certainly. Our party is not afraid of that. Our party is interested in springing the best candidate. And for quite a long time since when this race started, everybody believes you know, Professor Osim Bonjo is the best candidate of the two parties, PDP inclusive, simply because he is the person that knows and understands the challenges of this country. And in all the interactions, in all the outings, he has displayed his full knowledge of the way forward in addressing the critical challenges of this country. And many, many have come to believe him in his own standing as Professor Yemi Osimbanjo. And when you hear from the delegates what they are saying, you know, about him, mm. that they believe he's the best. And these are the two areas that they believe he, that he understood the challenges and he has the best, you know, solutions. But, 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 Prof, uh, on a final note now, yeah. with the state of affairs of the country right now, yeah. can you vouch or uh, preach about the capacity of the vice president? I mean, he's from the same administration, and some of you have talked about the challenges of this country. Yeah. How do you convince Nigerians that with what you're seeing, with what is on the ground, the same man within this system is the right candidate? Of course. The fundamental issue of difference is the issue of authority. It's a fundamental rule in management. When you give a responsibility, you give an attention authority before, before one becomes accountable. As number one, you will have the full authority 
to develop and implement you know, the agenda to address the challenges. Some of the challenges that we face, it has the inner deeper knowledge of where they are coming from, and therefore he has the better knowledge of where the solutions will come from. And I've initial from day one after the swearing in at Eagle Square, he will go into action. Mm. All right. He doesn't need any space to learn on the job, to understand, to be briefed, you know, and this country, you know, needs that much precious time. All right. Thank you, for Professor Hafiz Abubakar, for your time tonight. And I wish you and your team the very best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just before we go, everyone, and here is my final word, everyone. Well, for the past weeks, I've spoken to a section of this country who I consider very pivotal to this transition period and a period that is perhaps a most critical point in our history as a people. And we're not quite done with that group of people just yet. Tonight, I would like to speak to you. Yes, you, Miss and Miss Delegate, who participated in past primaries. The story of the monies you collected for votes is all over town. And like the proverbial selling of one soul for a bowl of porridge is a sad tale of how low humans could descend to trade their future and that of the children and even that of the ones yet unborn. For those who are yet to collect but plan to do so, know that for every kobo you collect, it's a trade-off for the good of this nation. The state of health sector, infrastructure, killings in the country, and insecurity, like we have seen today and in the past, you are privileged to represent the interests of millions of Nigerians through your vote in your party. But in that little but mighty capacity, you failed. And don't even blame bad governance in Nigeria, either at the center or in the state or at the local levels, on anyone because you have failed to do your own bit. The rot we see today, we blame it on you because instead of you selecting the right people to do the jobs, you will rather collect money to the detriment of the common good. You are now for sale and your conscience for the highest bidder. That is sad. Every Nigerian cannot be a delegate, but you have the privilege and you plan to ruin it. Nigeria is at a crossroad. No more blame game. If the political elites have divided the nation, and the nation and the Nigerian people with ethnicity and religion, it is time for people to shine their eyes and say no more. Once we were blind, now we can see. Because when we get leadership right, a large part of problems of this nation are solved. Politics of truth and good governance must prevail in the interest of the collective good of the nation. Nigeria must succeed. Again, I say, if we get it wrong this time, we will be dealing with another long, enduring time. Let us change our story for good. And that is my final word tonight. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. I'm Sean Kimbalei. Bye for now.